times like these, you've got the green light. Hello everyone, my name is Neopad Anon, and I write games for fun. So what are we working on today? We are going to be working on the one and only uh, Fists of Chaos, the newest game in the Sprague Workshop repertoire. Now, if you were here for yesterday's stream, you know we worked through the hard parts of this uh, game, of getting everything working together. You see I'm just putting together the preliminary document as we speak. And we managed to hack out something fairly simple. So that's our goal today. Our goal today is to put this into motion and to make the skeleton. Hello, phone. Who are you? What do you want? No, go away, please. I beg of you. It is to take this skeleton and put some bones on and put some flesh on it. Pretty much give it a, a decent start, you could say. Uh, see, I had the Project Tactics for Project Tactics open, but we're in Fist of Chaos. So create a game to facilitate glorious martial arts. Glorious martial arts. Uh, that is both fun, that is both fast and customizable, allowing characters to create their own styles and play, and uh, yeah, their own styles, styles of combat. That's our goal, that's our primary goal, above everything. And of course we have our four basic, we have our five basic ones, well six. No, yeah, we have our five basic ones. Easy enough to play, playable in under two hours. I'll allow players players to play the character they want. No asymmetrical trap, and a character can perform everything expected of them. So overall, if we go here, we go to fists of chaos. You notice I don't actually have the document set up because I I because I want to do everything right from the get go. So we're going to do we're going to type in. Fists of Chaos, our working document, and we're going to make this archivo like last time. And fists, fists of Chaos, name pending because I really don't have any good names for these things. And we're going to make that title. We'll bump it up to 36, Fists of Chaos, make it big and impressive. And then we'll go to our second one. And we're going to, actually I should, oops, highlight you, update title to match. And then I'm going to just type in heading one. Heading one, archivo, update heading to match, heading two, apply heading two, archivo. You may wonder like why I like archivo. I like uh, archivo just because it looks nice, to be honest. Pops things out really nicely. And three. And finally, heading four. And then we have our basic text. We'll make a 12 point font and update normal text to match. Perfect. So, let's start getting our basics in place. So, we'll just steal from. Well, let's do our last game, Project Tactics, which I should and also. I shouldn't call this the working document anymore. I should call it what it actually is, which is a finished product. 
finished. Blow. Oh god. Cut. Project tactics. Actually, I should follow the same updated. So, we're going to add our preface. And... Turn on the martial arts number one. That is in the crazy Wuxia action. Wuxia. I mean, not brute. So let show up. Street Fighter into a pen and paper game. Oof. Into a pen and paper. Into a pen and paper game. Punching people dramatically in the face. Knocking them presented a combination of my own, of my work. Work in this specific genre. Oh god, give me one moment. I wonder what I did there. I just took my shirt off because uh, it is heating up where I am pretty rapidly. So it's been this beautiful, like, mugginess throughout the entirety of my apartment. So it's like, ah, great. Uh, uh, role play. Is that the many people, people want to experience? Men are intimidated by the systems in question. They're fantastic, rounded action movie or detective detective thriller. I want this this game to cater to your martial. To your inner martial artist.
playing the game. Fists of Chaos. Chaos is played with a full set of dice from D4 to D20. Two, two, one, two, five, one, two, five players. Game master, and some spare time. Whenever a character attempts an action, that they chance failure is in opposition to another character. Actually, or in op or is in opposition to another character. They must perform a check. The character rolls their attribute attribute die plus modifiers in an attempt to reach target number TN TN for a simple check. Number TN for a simple check. Let's see. Set by the narrator. Actually, what should I should I call it something special? Ah, uh, yeah, let's call it something. Attribute die plus modifiers against one another and compare the result for an opposed check. Let's see. In the case of a tie for an OC, defender is assumed to have won. There is no defender. Then the character with the highest attribute die succeeds. Both attributes are the same. The player character succeeds. Acting as a referee, Whatever character defender. Actually, let me check something on a Savage World system. Four, four to six on success in the wild die. The roll is equal to the target number. The action succeeds, otherwise it's fail. A one on the target die, trait die, depending on. <sighs> if the result exceeds the. Uh, 
So let me just do a quick double check so on something. So D4, your range is obviously 1 through 4. D6 is 1 through 6. D8, 1 through 8. 1 through 10. So I'm going to have to do easy, 2 or higher. 3, 4, 5, 6. Actually, let me see. Actually, two, four, six, eight, ten, tw yeah, twelve. Mm. I'm gonna have to probably like, play around with these numbers a little bit. <laughs> Do I actually write this down anywhere? No, probably I don't because I'm a moron. But... can steal something from another game. Uh, an action with a chance of failure. Opp uh, opposition. To another character, they roll a check. An attribute, attribute die plus modifiers, and attempt the route to beat the tar the difficulty difficulty value DV for a simple check. Yes, by the referee or both parties roll attribute die. And to the character making the check. So it's effectively, everything's going to be in a post check. I'm actually stealing this from a game I did a little review on. Oh god, what was its name? What was its name? Oh, uh, golly gee willikers there, Batman. Uh, Is this the one? It is the one. <sighs> God, what do you name this system? Oh, I 
have no idea what he named it, but he doesn't have a name. So this was actually on a GDG thread, this idea of rolling in a kind of an opposed dice. I wasn't initially a fan of it, but I think I will work for this system in particular. Uh, Anon didn't have a name, and he doesn't actually have a thing for it. But it, it was actually fairly unique because the idea was that you had a two-axis resolution system. So, because you could succeed, you can have advantage, or you can fail, have advantage, or disadvantage, uh, unadvantage. So, it became fairly interesting, but the, again, it was the idea that you have to roll against an opponent, which, that's the part that kind of bummered me out more than anything, is it's like, mm -hmm. Uh, so d4, d6, d8, d10, d12. So easy checks, average checks, hard checks, very hard. Uh, making the check. It has a disadvantage in a situation. The referee instead instead adds a bonus ranging from plus one to plus five to the opposition to the DV rather than penalizing the character for a tart uh, difficulty value difficulty values uh, difficulty values there we go Go away, Kenshi. We don't need you here yet. I say yet. Uh, let me see. If the character's combined roll is equal to or higher than the DV's check, they are successful and clear the situation. If they roll less than the DV, they have failed and suffer the consequences. Certain abilities, styles, and moves will allow a character to augment their roles and change the nature of their dice. Certain stances, styles, and moves I'm actually going to put an example here. Actually, no, I'm not going to put an example here yet. So, what are we going to do? Character and squad creation now. Yay, character and squad creation. So, it doesn't like actually sticking to it, but hey, what do I know? <laughs> a fighter is composed of three parts their attributes, their skills, and their moves, and their style. Attrib attributes act as the character's basic abilities. Skills in skill in certain fields. 
skills skills are the characters learn acquire knowledge and ability is acquired knowledge on subjects while the, while the style is basic talent in certain fields while the style is their preferred method of violence toward toward others attributes Attributes, attributes. All right. All right, we go to our prelimin preliminary document where you're going to use our five attributes. continue using character or do I want to use fighter? Uh, I'll use character. The character's inherent attributes reflect their talents and abilities in the field on and off the battle on and off the battle the field. The lowest a character can have an attribute is D4. Actually, technically D2. D, D2. Well, the highest is D20. At character creation, all characters start with a baseline D6 in their, their attributes. And have the option of increasing and can increase them start with the baseline of each. I'll character start with the baseline of D6 and your attributes. And character can increase uh, has three points. They uh, five. Let's see. So with five points minimum, if I dump it into everything, so that'd be D8, D10, D12, D20. That's if you dump everything in one. So we go three minimum. You can do is get up to D12. But, mm, I'm going to say three has uh, three increases to their attributes. They may, they may distribute to increase them. Actually, we'll say four increases to their attributes, with it, which they may distribute to increase their die value. And if we get project tactics, we're going to find. Strength works the way it is. And nothing else works. Technically, I can go with finesse. This renamed dexterity to finesse. Fin. 
uh, Fez, then S does F and S. Yeah, I think that works. Mm. <sighs> oh, carry equipment, that's good fits. Foot speed. Um, acrobat acrobatism. Acrobatism? God, is that even a word? Uh, we want to go to acrobatism. No, acrobatism is not a word. Uh, acrobatic ability and skill at manipulating the body. Natural coordination and speed. A character with high finesse is quicker than speed. A character with low finesse is two left feet. And there's an uptake and sometimes a bit clumsy. So, strength. Strength works. I'm gonna have to reorganize these into. Alphabetically speaking, it would be break, finesse, strength, technique. So let's do break first. So break BRK. Uh, the character's ability to shake off harm. Uh, actually, should I just substitute that for toughness? I'm going to substitute for toughness more and more accurately, I'm going to call it endurance. So that would go... That yeah, still works. I'll put endurance right there. Endurance. Oh, vitality. Uh, vitality implies health. I don't really have a health attribute. What's the exact definition of vitality? Tell me. It's a state of being strong or active. You gotta tell me what toughness is. Trying to withstand adverse conditions or rough handling. Okay. Um, you know what? Toughness works. I think toughness is better. So toughness would have to go right there. So strength. Toughness, and that means finesse goes first as uh, so finesse, strength, toughness, technique. Technique. Tech. There's knowledge and skill and their warlike craft. A character with high technique. Knows the ins and outs of their style and, abil and abilities. A character with low technique relies less on their ability, rely less on their their knowledge of the, st of the style and more its direct brute force application. Can actually do is scholarly education as well as hands on experience. Ability to read and understand an opponent's style. Uh, 
skillet, applying complex maneuvers with their style. And our final one, Will. The character's mental, physical. The character's mental toughness and ability to push through opposition. A character with high will. It's headstrong and unflinching. And their determination. Determination to succeed. A character with low will is easily manipulated and can rapidly lose faith. Ability to influence social situations. Care, uh, mental and physical reserves of strength. to apply mystic styles moves all right oh nope no, we want to hit that button and then we want to post everything here right now because I'm lazy, lazy, lazy. And toughness, heading three, select everything, control shift eight, technique, good old fashioned technique, technique, heading three, control shift eight, and actually tab, 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 have highlight everything here. Control Shift 8. And min the high manipulated. Oh, sweet Christmas Christ. That's my back going in a direction I do not appreciate. Okie dokie. That, that was painful. That was a lot more painful than I was hoping. So, we've got all of this. we got our basic attributes wrapped up. And what comes after our attributes? Obviously, it comes our skills. So, we're going to use our skills. And we're just going to post our skills, actually, right here. Collection of knowledge and experience that allows them to perform better in certain areas of expertise. When a character has a skill, they will... When a character has a skill in a field, they has a have a has a when a character has a skill, yeah, well, actually uh, possesses a skill, they roll in extra d six one d six on top of their attribute die, die adding both together to have have the final final result. Any skill with X is considered a field, which requires a ch character to choose a specialization inside of the skill. If there are situations where two skills would interact, and the character would roll would add two additional D6s and take the high uh, two additional D6s to their roll. Academics, particular subject. Acrobatics, physical agility and dexterity. Athletics. Uh, skills. Skills can be applied in combat. Knowledge. 
Active Investigation. Endurance, physical endurance. I'm gonna take endurance out. Take these two out. Lordsmanship, uh, perform, stealth, mercantile, medicine, mechanics, larceny, knowledge, investigation, diplomacy. Specific word of fiddling. I'll use this as kind of a basic setup as of right now. It's not my favorite thing in the world, but I think it'll work. Skills. A character at creation. Character starts with two skills, skills of their choice. So A B C D E F G H I A B C D E F G H I so gymnastics the ability to bend, twist, turn, and tumble effectively in a performance. There we go. Effectively, you can't really use that for combat. It's just like, oh no, I learned how to tumble really well, but it's like, oh hey, I'm jumping from a roof to rooftop, I can apply my gymnastics skill. You know, gymnastics plus finesse, and I've suddenly leaped across and, and safe, or hey, I've done this, and I'm you know safe, roughly. Uh, two skills, the eight characters starts two skills of their choice. And then we go into the captain classes. Okay. This is where things get complicated, because what we have to do now is styles. You know what? I've been streaming for 48 minutes right now, about 50 minutes. And I'm going to call it here. You may be wondering, wow, that's kind of a shorter stream, Notepad. The answer is yes, and I say that for two reasons. One, I'm still debating on whether or not I want to tie this to a specific setting or not. Because if I tie it to a specific setting, I have the advantage of having a 
ability to kind of uh, make things for it, specific styles and specific things for that setting in particular. If I don't tie it to a specific setting, what I'm debating on doing almost is having like four or five kind of example ones and then having like a full list of like, this is how you actually design styles, skills, and abilities. This is how you design them. So pretty much making it a toolbox. I don't know how I want to do that yet. So I'm going to call it here for the night. And I'm going to inquire with people the best I can to get the idea of what to work. I have a few ideas uh, if I want to go down the create your own route. Uh, I'll create my own route. I also have a couple ideas on what I would like to do if, if that's not the case. So uh, thank you all for watching. I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day. We've got the first uh, bits of Fist of Chaos working, and hopefully tomorrow is we can start on our styles, try to get those wrapped up. I'm not suspecting this isn't going to be like a big thing. I could probably, actually, what I can do... Yeah, actually, what I'm going to do tonight is I'm going to do the derived statistics. That's going to be the final part of this. So that's going to be derived attributes, health, stamina, health, and health and stamina. Immortal and untiring. Every action. Every punch taken. Enemy defeated. Enemy. Enemy. Defeated. Take something away. Something away from the character. Be it health or stamina. Health. The character's physical well being. Well being is reflected on their body parts. Each limb with each section of their body being represented. Section of their body being represented. And that means we don't want to go to here. What we can do is we can go to where did the light fade softly. Taking a or oh, taking an iron breaking kick to the head. Kim's well being is determined by the whims of fate and whether they can fight well. Each part of the character is divided into parts that will affect them if they are crippled by reaching zero health. In addition, if part is reduced to negative health value equal to their starting health, the part is destroyed. And then we select all our parts here and we post them head and it's this is going to be because we have if we go up here and scroll up we have our toughness attributes so this is going to be toughness so toughness plus five so then this is going to be toughness times two Actually, no, that's toughness. Uh, toughness times two plus ten. Uh, toughness plus fifteen. So actually, we have D four eight. Yeah. Uh, 
Uh, toughness. Because this is pretty much based off the die, so having a d6, let's say a d6 toughness would mean you'd have 6 plus 5 health. So you'd have 11. So this, I had 6 here, 12, 22 arms. What's the math I got here? 25 plus. And we'll do. We'll do 20 plus, and then toughness times 2 plus 10. Actually, just toughness plus 10. And then toughness plus 10. If crippled, the character is like his winner easily. Crippled character is knocked out and is rendered helpless. If destroyed, the character suffers instant painless death. Gut. Out of memory limbs take 1d10 damage. If destroyed, collapses in pain. They will bleed. They start to bleed out. Arms. If crippled, the character's arms are rendered useless. They drop whatever they're holding in their hand if the character is not using two handed weapon. They. They cannot use the. The limb for move for moves or abilities for moves. Arm is arm is tore off. They drop their current weapon and bleed to death in bot turns. Bleed, bleed to death in toughness turns. Comes in plane. And will bleed to death in tough turns. Tore off, they drop their current weapon and will bleed to death. And then actually, mm, yeah, uh, if let's see. Uh, Is considered broken. Broke the character stuff. It's instant painless death. Yeah, I know. If you get kicked in the head hard enough that you break your fucking skull open, yeah, that ain't gonna. Cuts us in pain. It's unable. And it's unable to act and is rendered unconscious. If broken, the character's arm is tore off. Actually, the character's arm is snapped. Snapped cleanly. They are unable to use the limb for toughness. Toughness minus 12, uh, 20 weeks. 24 weeks. Use the limb. Use the lamb going forward unless it is reset or splinted. Crippled, uh, rendered useless. They can only move half their distance. And cannot use the limb for moves. If 
broken the character's leg is cleanly broken. They fall to the ground hard and unable to crawl up. They fall to the ground hard and can only move one unit. They can only move can only move a quarter. Can only crawl. Crawl. Or must be supported. Supported to move unless it is reset or splinted. Attributes, and that means you have to be a three, and that makes you a four. Four now, mind you, this is not final. I have a few ideas of how I would want to do this, and what I'm actually thinking about is like what kind of damage you take. Like, if you take blunt damage. You have you, know, you just break the limb, while it yeah you know, it's a non-lethal, well, relatively non-lethal. Uh, it's a relatively non-lethal anyway method for you to pretty much like oh gosh you know it's not I'm not going to die from this. However, if you get it cut or if you you know get sliced open, if you get it cut open, then it's obviously you'd add you know, oh hey I got my limb ripped off. Help, please. I'm bleeding to death. And that's kind of like my idea. So this is just kind of a temporary thing to put in here for now. Not flawless, but I think it'll work. Uh, toughness plus 10. I'm going to actually bump you up to plus 15. And so we're going to do insert footnote. So for example... Character has a d6 in toughness. They add 6. 6 plus 5 equals 11 health to on um, their head. They were to take 22, 22 damage to their head, it would be considered broken. As it would be negative 11. As it would be negative, quote, negative 11 health. Uh, you're not supposed to be there. Up there. And now we get to do steam now. Stamina. A character stamina is their ability to to continue the fight, use moves, and allow allows them to use their defensive abilities. against an opponent's onslaught. A character begins the... A character has a starting stamina of will, time, will plus five. But certain styles may passively increase 
certain styles and moves may passively increase the stamina value. If a character runs out of stamina, they are considered helpless and take double damage from all attacks against them. A little bit harsh, but I uh, don't get hit. Fun fact, everyone. If you don't want to die, don't get hit. Now I'm actually going to end, end the stream here. I got what I wanted to do here. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to hit that. I'm going to insert a table of contents. Post that here. Perfect. Looks like everything is the way I want it to be. And now what I get to do after this is decide on how I want to do styles. All right, everyone. Well, thank you very much. Have a wonderful rest of your day.